Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about how you might calculate the bond angle in methane. I'm going to be using two mathematical techniques. I'm going to be using the cosine rule first, followed by a method using vectors. If you enjoy the style of this presentation, do please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to my channel. Many thanks in advance. Okay then, hopefully this way of drawing methane is familiar to you as a tetrahedral structure uh, with this hydrogen down here and this hydrogen at the top and the carbon are all going to be in the plane of the paper. This um, hydrogen down here is in front and this one is behind the plane of the paper. So one thing we can identify with the atoms in the plane of the paper is that there's actually a triangle here and the angle we want in here is the bond angle. Um, we should be able to get that from trigonometry. Just having a think about how the atoms arrange themselves in space, we've got this red triangle here between these um, in-plane atoms. Uh, if I were to draw another line here between these two other ones, well, there's actually another triangle here. And it turns out that these two triangles are rotated at 90 degrees to each other. So we can see that if I take a sort of look down this triangle here, as indicated by this red arrow. Okay, so I'm taking the hydrogen to a carbon, to a hydrogen, that's my projection looking down that triangle, if you like, and behind it in purple, the other two uh, hydrogens are off in this direction. And to keep all the atoms as far away as possible from each other, which is the idea of a tetrahedral bond ge bonding geometry in the first place, we know that this angle here is a right angle. So now we've had a think about the geometry of a tetrahedron, it turns out to be really useful to think about a unit cube, which is what I've drawn on these coordinate axes here, and this will help us keep track of distances. So a unit cube is just a cube of length one on each of these axes here. So where do my atoms go in here? Well, if I put one of the hydrogens at the origin, um, that will work for the tetrahedron, and we said there's got to be two in the plane. So it turns out that the other places where hydrogens will be are here, and one at this top one at the back, and one down here. So we can kind of see that there's a um, the two planes that are at right angles that we discussed before are just indicated there. So somewhere in the middle of this, there should be the carbon atom, which is in a position that's exactly halfway along each of the coordinate axes. At this point, I'm just going to define myself a useful bond length here. So I'm going to say that this CH bond length is going to be some variable d, which I'll use to indicate on the diagram. If we have a look at this top corner here, indicated in red on my unit cube, we can see that if we drew a line from the origin to that, that position, that the carbon will be at the exact midpoint of that line. And I'm going to define this line here as having length r. And we can just use Pythagoras in 3D to get us that distance r. So r squared will be equal to, well, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, the, diff the distances in the different directions. So r squared is equal to, well, each of these is equal to 1. So 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. r is equal to root 3. You can also get that result by considering Pythagoras uh, in just two dimensions. So for example, I could have a think about this diagonal here across the bottom indicated in green. So there's a right angle in this triangle drawn in green length one, length one, therefore this is length root two. And then using a different triangle with this purple line, and that's a right angle there, I've got two lengths of the sides as root two, that length is one, so I can say that r squared is equal to one squared plus root two squared, and I get the same thing, that r squared is equal to three, therefore r is equal to root three. Now my CH bond is just half the distance there, so I know that d is equal to a half root three. Okay, now I'm going to focus on where the bond angle actually is in my diagram. Well, I need two of the CH bonds, so I'm just going to connect another one up, and I'm aiming to calculate this angle in the middle here, theta. So we have a triangle, um, that I'm just going to connect those two hydrogens there together, and we know that two of the bond distances here, but two of the bond lengths is D, and this is D. So I have one final side that I need to be able to work out, and I can do that by looking at this particular triangle in purple that has a right angle here, has a distance one, a distance one, therefore I know that this distance here is root two, and that gives me the final piece of the puzzle that I need. So just coming out of this diagram now, I've got a triangle here with, well, it's an isosceles triangle, both of these distances are D, I know that this is equal to root two, and the angle is what I actually want to calculate. I'm just gonna call it theta for now. So it's possible in a situation like this, just to deploy a cosine rule and um, to work out what theta is. So that will tell me directly that root two squared is equal to, well, there's two D squared. 
take away, well, two and d times d, another d squared cos theta. Just to tidy up, I can factorize 2d squared. So as we said before, we actually know what d is. It's just um, a half root three. So I can square that and I know that d squared is equal to three over four. And a bit of rearranging will get me the expression cos theta equals to minus one third. So I can now get my calculator and work out what theta is. So theta will turn out to be 109.5 degrees, which is exactly what we were expecting for a tetrahedral bond angle. Now, there's an alternative way we could have done this problem and not using only geometry, we could have used vectors to help us here. So I want to present a different way of doing it using vector geometry. So I'm just going to define a few vectors to help me. So I'm going to define a vector A, which takes me from the origin to the carbon in the center. And I'm going to define another vector that takes me from the origin to one of the hydrogens. And I'm going to define that B. So we already know what the coordinates of some of these um, positions are because of the way that we defined things. We said that this was a unit square. So the hydrogen up here must be, well, it's one along the x-axis, zero along the y-axis, and one along the z-axis. The carbon in the center will have coordinates a half, a half, a half, being exactly in the middle of the cube. I'm going to define one more vector to help us close that triangle to have a think about the bond angles, and that's this one here in green, and I'm going to call that C. Right, so we can see from our diagram um, how these connect together. We can see that, well, if we go along B, it's exactly the same as going along A plus C. So I can say that vector B is equal to A plus C. So the bond angle we're actually looking for is this one here. It's in between C and A. So I'm just going to rearrange this one to give me C is equal to uh, B minus A. Now, this tells us that we can work out what C is straight away because we know what B and A are because both B and A are position vectors. So the position vector of B is just one, zero, one and the position vector of A, so the carbon in the center, is just a half, a half, a half. So therefore, C is the vector a half minus a half plus a half. So we can use the scalar product or the dot product to help us think about angles between vectors. And specifically, I want to think about A dotted with C. And that's going to be equal to, well, A is a half, a half, a half. And I'm going to dot that with C, which we just said is a half minus a half, a half. This will be equal to the modulus of vector A times by the modulus of vector C times by cos of the acute angle between them. So we have to just be a bit careful about this later. This is the acute angle between A and C. So to compute the dot product, I need to go through my vectors and cross multiply each row between these and then add together the results. So I'll get this result on the left-hand side, and that's going to be equal to, well, what's the, the length of these vectors? Uh, so just taking A to start with, I need to square each of the terms. I'm going to have a big square root. Each of the terms has size a half, so it's a half squared, and there's three of them. And the length of C is actually the same, because although there's a minus sign in there, when we square it, it will just disappear. So I've got half squared, three of those. So that's two square roots that are the same as each other, times by cos of theta, which is the angle between them. On the left-hand side, I can see that these two terms will cancel because of the minus sign. And on the right-hand side, I can see that those two square roots, well, that's two square roots of something times by each other. So that's just the contents of the square root sign. So on the left-hand side, I've got a quarter is equal to three times, well, a half squared is a quarter times by cos of theta. I can see that the quarters cancel out and that will give me cos of theta is equal to a third. Note that that's not minus a third this time and that's a reflection of we have to keep an eye on where the angle that we've just computed is. So when we take the dot product of something what we're actually doing is not calculating the bond angle that we want. So just to keep a track we've got a vector a something like this and we had the other vector c, which came out of the end of this one. So what we've done is computed the acute angle between them, which is actually this one here. This is theta. I can use my calculator to work out what this angle is, and it's going to turn out to be 70.5 degrees. So I can use the fact that I know that the angles on this straight line have to add up to 180 degrees, and therefore this one is 109 and a half degrees, which is exactly what we'd expect for a tetrahedron. So one way of looking at this dot product is actually what we're really doing is if we had a vector A and we had a C, 
originating from the same point, what we do is we calculate that angle there, which isn't actually what's in our diagram. So we just have to be very, very careful at the end to identify what the thing we've calculated actually is. Okay, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, do consider giving the video a like and subscribing to my channel. Do let me know if there are other topics in chemistry that you'd like to hear me talk about in a casual style.